Welcome back to another Dragon Ball Super Card Game video. And it's been a while, but uh, I've gotten a couple questions of like, where have I been? And what have I been doing? Or why haven't I posted a video? And I just stop and think sometimes. I, I can't put a finger on it. But I will return to making videos pretty soon, uh, even for the month of January for 2022. I'm going to be doing a video per day, every single day in January is going to be great. More details on that a little bit later. But today uh, we're going to go ahead and focus on what's important. We just finished the world's uh, championship or world championship, and we finally got a victor for it. Okay, I just wanted to pause here. Uh, I just wanted to give a big shout out to our new world champion, which is Andrew the Fall. Shout out to John, uh, once, uh Soto for getting second literally every other competitor um they all provided really really good games at a really high level uh um, amount of play and just a shout out to all the commentators uh from john to melvin to kevin uh and of course my team hayden and george george was a big part of helping me to design everything and just being in order for everything so he gets a, a ton of that uh, credit as well but if anything um really big shout out to the community and just watching um just being there uh, it sucks that it wasn't in person, but we are making do what we can uh, for bringing people around the world together, um, even with the memes, uh, the eight memes and everything else. It was just a great time. So thank you. And honestly, it was a great time just uh, for nationals, the NA nationals and as well as the worlds. Uh, both of them I produced, well produced, or I guess I designed the, the stream and uh, ran the whole thing in the in the in, in the background and honestly I, I can't think enough uh, for my team between Eggman Hayden and of course the spirit George uh, for helping me along the way and all the casters who uh, put out their time I really just appreciate their time just uh, casting and just having a good time while we're there I'm just gonna keep saying time apparently anyway I wanted to go through all of the deck lists uh, and talk about the weird sort of format but also not really that weird when you really think about it. We had all of the meta decks and the decks that we were expecting between Gogeta Xeno and as well as Higher Dragon and a couple others like Cell Surge. But at the end of the day, we had a couple of uh, rogue decks between uh, Android 16 and as well as Green Broly or the starter deck Broly, I should say. And really, it's not really, really not that surprising. I have to just consider the players that were invited or at least earned their um, respective place in the world championship from winning and being the runner up of the other national events. And if you consider the decks that they actually played for the national events, then you would probably understand why they actually took those decks. Getting right into the decks, you can see all the decks in the description below. Of course, uh, this is my version of the overview. Obviously my opinion is gonna be a little bit different from Hayden's, but this is all Hayden when uh, he got all the, the information together and he has his own video on his channel as well, which he probably should link to his channel here. I'm going to tell him to do that. <laughs> Taking a quick look at everyone uh, from their respective country slash region slash places. Uh, <laughs> uh, for the qualifiers, we had uh, the Juan Soto just having a sweeping 3-0 with Gogeta Zeno, which is pretty crazy because now we, we take a look at David Liu with his 1-2 finish in the secondary uh, group. If you didn't know, we had two groups, group A and group B. Um, within the four players within each group, the top two with the best records would move on into the semifinal slash next weekend, which is what just happened. We have Jeremy with his cell surge, pretty standard hand, hand control. Then we had Wang with his unk unk unk. Uh, I, I can't I can't do it. I, I try to do it. Sorry, sorry, Frank Castle Castle. But uh, his starter deck probably I think it was pretty similar to the list from before, but a few number of changes that we've seen in the Oceana? I forget, I, I don't remember, but Wang's list was definitely f different from uh, a number of other starter deck Broly lists that we've seen. Then of course, Andrew Duvall's Higher Dragon, a couple different changes, I think in the side and the main, like small changes, but pretty pretty similar to his mono yellow list uh, that he played in the NA Nationals. And then we have uh, a few others or a number of others from Lorenzo's Higher Dragon, Ivan's Higher Dragon, which both differ uh, from the uh, the deck choices, or I should say the 
card choices in the deck. And then we have Jared's Android 16, which just baller Android supremacy sucks that he didn't qualify, but is what it is. And then again, David Lou's uh, Gogeta Xenos. Of course, you can always take a look at all of the uh, qualifying matches as far as the uh, re-uploads. I tried my best to have at least one, like a, a unique match for everyone. So like everybody has their own uh, re-upload uh, as far as an as an individual, the semi the semis and as well as the finals should be all up on the YouTube channel by the time that this is up uh, on my YouTube channel, of course. My best to look at these in order. Of course, I'll have timestamps uh, below so that way you can kind of skip through if you'd like. But we do have uh, Gogeta Zeno, pretty awesome deck. I mean, it's not not a surprise that it did well, not only in nationals but also being chosen like you you have to realize that people are playing for a golden awakened power the first place uh world championship uh title and just all the pricing that comes with it like the apex uh reprint so choosing the deck not only for nationals but also choosing the deck um for a world championship is incredibly important so <laughs> just uh, choosing the wrong deck or at least like being too off meta or too off uh, uh off kilter is pretty important as well so gogeta Zeno and all the other ones that i've mentioned uh, is super important just to realize that they picked those for a reason and of course not very surprising this is pretty standard i think for any gogeta Zeno uh list that i've seen uh playing the four of the trunks and four of these guys really <laughs> really exemplifies uh the power of the one drops and as well as uh, just making it consistent overall. It's interesting that he main boarded the Tenacious uh, Bardock just so he can have that option to um, prevent any major attacks from coming off. We did see it in the tournament at least once. I don't know how useful it was, but I do believe that time uh, was a little off as far as the choice. We do have the Black Smoke Dragon, which I do believe um, this bad girl, I was going to say bad boy, but the TP does play it off and he, do he does play three of them, which is interesting. And one Pycon in the side. That's actually really interesting as far as the ratio choices. Uh, I'm not a Gogeta Xeon player myself, but someone could put in the comments below uh, why he may have done that. Uh, a main boy Koitsukai is most likely for higher dragon and things like that. Uh, one of Supreme, Supreme Kai, um, the Lab Labrys, the counterattack that warps one, and one in the side is pretty good. And then two of the Oceanus, which is interesting because I think this is a really strong card against uh, higher dragon and just decks that try to go and try to draw like 10 cards a game but it's really interesting to see that in the main board and they also have three i was gonna say four but three super kamehameha uh i think this was for the cell surge matchup um and really anything else that plays out something three or less which I, I can't really think of too many but i guess in the mirror it could be a make or break situation against one of the one drops as well and i think these guys hit or these guys get hit uh together on the uh, marvelous might so i think someone can go ahead and blind super kamehameha and then send them to the warp which is probably counter intuitive because <laughs> you're playing against gogeta xeno so i mean you're probably helping them if anything then we also have uh petrification which i don't think really came out uh from what i've seen in the matches um it's a really useful card against bigger bodies so like if you're going against blue or if you're going against something that uh, like a kefla or whatever it may be um, that really could hurt you within one given turn. Petrification does really well to get around that. Uh, do we do we have two of the Deborah? I think three is probably the number, but I think this this sideboard is pretty tight as it as it is. Um, most of this is like one ofs that kind of help within within the matchups um, to make it three ofs and just make it more consistent. Uh, the secret identity and the and the shroud. Wow. The Secret Identity and as well as the Fu Shrouded for more Overwhelm uh, targets. I don't think Gogeta Xeno necessarily plays a lot of like Overwhelm, or I should say like they can play a lot of Overwhelm. Most of the time it's going to be um, manipulating your warp into your drop. So you're going to have like one or two uh, different times that you can actually uh, Overwhelm. Uh, excluding this trunks, which is pretty easy to get out because you only need three in the drop anyway. No main board power burst, which is interesting because you play so many one drops, but uh, I think it really worked out for him since he went three and zero in the qualifying round.
All right, this is Jeremy Cell Surge deck, which is always a delight to see, but not so much of delight because it's pretty much the same deck um, that is really everywhere else. I think uh, it's interesting because um, there are a few changes uh, that really make the Cell player adapt to the given format and as well as the given matchup. Um, for instance, this Denver Girl, just having your, your uh, Frieza Charismatics at four uh, some players don't do that. I personally do that, but I like having this at four, especially for the Gogeta Xeno matchup, which is one of your worst uh, for Cell Surge in general. Um, but I think that's that's one of those things that you kind of have to make a make a decision of like, do I want to play this or not? Um, and then we also have the Dark Power in the main with one more in the side. We have obviously the Champ Pack, four of the Cell um, uh, IARs, which is just a really strong card, turn one or turn two, usually turn one. Uh, if they're really going aggro or if they're good, you're just going to punish them for uh, just attacking. And then Rosie, just an MVP, paying three and seeing this uh, girl come down uh, with deflect. Uh, it's really good against blue and just in general to snipe or at least get two more cards out of their, their hand, uh, which in turn can really help with everything else. Like as in doing this, awakening, doing doing a uh, Rebrian into a Toa, into a leader effect. That's effectively five to six cards right there. So um, really, really strong in general, just to have Rosie as a finisher and just as a, <laughs> as a triple attacker that uh, makes you get punished. Blue Impulse is really cool to see in the in the sign. I don't think there's too many too many things to really um, really hit. I think uh, Higher Dragon maybe that's really about it. I think the blue yellow version is really more susceptible to Blue Impulse than the mono yellow version anyway. I guess Mecha Mecha Frieza Repose is probably a, a good target for that, but I, I don't think they're really playing those things uh, against Cell Surge anyway because it's not really attacking. Uh, then we also have this for the mirror. Um, unexpected turn is interesting and summer strike. I don't really know what the, um, what the matchup would be for this, but cool. I do want to shout out, uh, Jordan Markle. I know he was very, uh, adamant about, you know, getting to worlds. I wish he was. I mean, I think that would be very entertaining, but I'm very thankful for all the players here. Uh, the other shout out that I wanted to give was this side for the one drop Toa that, um, basically warps something from their drop. So they're citing in apes or they're citing in. Uh, the other ape or whatever it may be, uh, they can just go and warp that out. I think it wasn't really played here because the Deborah uh, was more of a, a, a side tech option against Cell Surge than it was for the um, the Saiyan Instincts. Uh, ape Supreme. Now, we were talking about it in the, well, at least George and Hayden were talking about it <laughs> in the stream, but immediately before we even into the main deck we have a commemorative commemorative photo in his sideboard we have the world champion in his sideboard and Saiyan instincts in his sideboard um if if this isn't some sort of like <laughs> so like okay you gotta realize that he can't even play Saiyan instinct so that's out of the window like unless he he charges the world champion somehow and then goes into saying instincts I, I guess i don't know but i guess he can just go ahead and just um i mean i, I mean the other way around he can't play i'm a world champion unless he charges the saying instincts which ain't saying instincts should be in the drop before he gets even a, a charge off but either way i digress uh world champion if you didn't get the joke obviously he's putting that in because he thinks he's gonna be the world champion this is recorded before it even happened so i'll edit it if he does uh, so uh very interesting to see but overall this deck was very very much of a delight to watch obviously the biggest thing <laughs> the biggest ape in the room was the primal carnage the primal mistake against uh, Andrew Duvall and uh, that was so, so entertaining to watch and just such a such a crazy thing to to even see in a world championship setting um, but always obviously it's one of those things of like this is a rogue deck obviously this is, hasn't been in a top cut in a while other than like in other regions and for himself most likely um, but also this is a, a rogue SER and I, I think he even commented if I can I'll put it on the screen here uh, on one of my videos that you know it's a rogue it's a rogue SER. He, he just didn't want anybody to expect it. So he um, went ahead and put that in and it really did work. It really did work against Andrew Duvall, uh, popping the thing that he went all in in. And then against uh, Jared uh, Lopez, both of our US players, <laughs> sad, sad tear down my eye, but um, uh, paying five and going into the triple strike 
dual attack with no response to it, which is very unfortunate. But it was one of those things of like, if you don't expect it, then it's gonna work. But if you do, then it's gonna be kind of an issue. So we have uh, all of these hand destruction uh, slash Broly pieces from the one drop into the three drop. You only play two of the one drop because it's chargeable by the leader effect if you didn't know that already. And then we also have four of the Bonjin Boo so that way it can buy you some time throughout. Just a little bit uh, of a useless card, not really a useless card, but kind of a less important card when it comes to like Gogeta Xeno because obviously they're just gonna super Kamehameha it. And they also have the Rebrian at four, which makes sense because you're just going to combo them out. And then your leader's just going to draw into six. Uh, Zarbon, same concept. And then the, the one of seven drop that goes from the four drop, which your leader can pop uh, into itself. And then we also have the five drop, which is really great against like, again, higher dragon blue decks that have chunky um, unisons, um, even against Gogeta Xeno, if you survive against uh, uh, until that point, it's uh, something to uh, get rid of for or for them to get rid of. Um, uh, and most of the time they're just going to warp it. So maybe that that comment is uh, null and void. But we have almost out of clones. The Bardock that did work uh, or does work, I, I should say, against Android 16 and just really any combo step, especially when you're trying to punish uh, pretty much every every player with every card that you're swinging with and just swinging um, into Android 18 and dumping your hand and then drawing six. That's basically the concept of this, de of this deck. And then of course, Dark Power Max Saiyan uh, against their Deboras is uh, pretty standard in the side. I don't really understand the rest of them other than Focus Breakthrough and maybe um, these two. Uh, I don't really suspect I guess I guess you could use your overrealm slot for this guy. Uh, it's a double striker, um, critical boy for 20 for free. It's never a bad idea, but fighting against fate is usually the better pick. But overall, just a delight to see this deck. All right, this is Andrew Duvall's deck. So our national champion, or at least my national champion <laughs> in North America. Uh, we also have we uh, we have pretty much the same deck that he played for nationals. I don't really see too many uh, changes like i said before i think ratios and as well as this vegeta unison and the main board vegeta uh, striving to be the best which is probably which most likely when you have three of what eight people in the world championship you made the right call um when you see another higher dragon and they're going to be playing the slug package as well so main boarding these uh, these guys at two uh popping it and making sure that you get that untap one is very very cool um that's pretty much it. I mean, there's not really too much to, to talk about this deck. Higher Dragon is one of those decks that have all has all has access to all of the good cards and uh, it does it really well. And we've seen that time and time again um, in, in the game. And it, it just sort of proves a point of when you build a good deck, you put the cards um, together that are good. You have a decent leader, which of course, Higher Dragon is nowhere near as good as like Mecha Frieza or Yellow Broly in his prime, etc. But it's still really, really good for draw and as well as self awakening. And then you put a really good player with that, then you can have this kind of result uh, at the end of the day. So very, very cool to see that. Obviously, we have some hand destruction heat, um, which is interesting because High Dragon does have like, usually like a 10 to 15 card hand um, on average every single game. But this really helps in the early game. That's that's really where the first three turns against Cell Surge or whatever hand destruction that you're going against is really a killer. And these three uh, definitely do help that. Um, so a, a, what is this? Nine cards dedicated to hand destruction in the sideboard. So not to surprising there and of course one more vegeta unison uh for the gogeta matchup and then the undying specifically for the gogeta matchup there's only two matchups that he really had in mind outside of fushrata and forbidden power which i think those kind of go in hand in hand in those matchups as well that he he wanted to side against so um very very cool uh awesome player uh just overall just a a great time to watch and i can't wait to see uh what he does now, Lorenzo's deck, pretty similar. And uh, I guessed up uh, Andrew's, Andrew and Andrew's deck uh, quite a lot, but uh, there are notable differences in this deck than his. Um, first, starting with uh, an extra Frieza reinforcement. Well, maybe not an extra one, but <laughs> the three Chi Chi Melee, uh, melee uh, Marchiarch. Marchiarch. I, I'm not even going to try. I'm, a, I'm, I'm illiterate. Uh, three of the Chi Chi's, these are just sticky one drops that replace themselves that you can go into um, uh, Lord Slug uh, right after. So that way you have two 
uh, barrier targets outside of poutine because usually poutine into slug is going to be the combo but uh this girl in turn one is not gonna uh is gonna help you overall as well especially when you can get the higher dragon out for free uh, it doesn't have barriers so it's gonna be easily removed um this one is not going to be for turtles all too easy to really talk about this along with the robot at repost but if you've watched any of the um the matches from before or any of the matches that i've uploaded with higher dragon these two are pretty much one of the mvps outside of slug uh simply because uh he is a two cost i draw and pop and as well as um have a double strike 20k that can end games if you don't get aped and then um a robotic repose just simply makes your turn uh very very hard or over so there you go the other notable changes are going to be the Absolute Annihilation and as well as Return of the Dragon Fist. So uh, Absolute Annihilation is a fantastic card and makes a lot of matchups very, very hard. Or I should say makes your deck, if you rely on certain things like extra cards, really, really hard. Uh, makes the power of the Super Saiyan instead of free um, cost one. And just overall, just a just a a, war, a, a game warping card, not a not a dragon ball super card game working card but match warping card I, I should say uh just really have to play against this and um just a just a headache but it's really effective against blue it's really effective against um uh decks that really rely on those extra cards but i think overall it didn't do as much of an impact um as i thought it would uh within the uh the 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 match He's also playing 56 cards, so I mean, that's uh, another thing. It really, like, this deck does go through itself. Um, like, everything kind of replaces itself. Uh, he draws two cards per turn, basically, uh, on both sides. And um, it's really, it's not really not that big of a deal, but overall, really, really cool. Got the sideboard at the bottom, unexpected turn, the Vegeta that we talked about before, Kotsukai for um, literally everything <laughs> honestly literally everything uh that you can think of as far as battle card counters and as well as uh rival those are kind of the two main things that coach kai uh gets around as well as um poutine like you kind of punish poutine uh if you believe they're going to be doing power of the super saiyan into poutine and you get punished for that as well two flying nimbus which uh you don't really see flying nimbus too much anymore because of these type of counters um but i think in the right circumstance flying nimbus can be good i just don't really see this being cited in too often all right here's jared's deck uh it's funny i'm not, i was gonna mention it just like how john did uh, in his uh in his commentary i was gonna say i was playing android 16 i literally have it on untap uh the same <laughs> a very not a really similar deck I, I don't really play some of these uh, and the ram package but i was really just a lot of arrival and just a lot of like beat down stuff android 16 is such a great rogue deck which i think is slowly you know it, it's not going to become rogue as more and more people play it um i think uh i think melvin or someone said it in the commentary that obviously uh, this deck is really successful because of the, per the person uh playing it and jared is a really good pilot for, pilot for this unfortunately again he didn't qualify but he really did prove in his, his undefeated rounds uh, in the NA Nationals that this is a really fantastic deck. Uh, does really well against hand control because your your hand is your energy and as well as your drop. Your hand is more of a um, extension of the plays that you want to do and making sure that you have this in hand. <laughs> really unfortunate not seeing this and as well as the two drop, which is why I think this this guy, yeah, this guy has that effect. Uh, so that way you can technically play at turn one um, and then making sure that you have this turn two every single turn. Uh, the, in the sideboard is very interesting. Obviously, we, we can talk about the other staples, but really, it, you know, it comes down to the arrivals, the Fuse of Masu uh, just staying there and just um, the Android 21 to burn. I think playing three probably is the, the move here, but that's just me. Um, we also have uh, another unison that draws you a card technically. Uh, it's, a, it's a 19k attacker that blocks and gets some removal as well. Uh, same thing for the Gotenks where if you are going against something like Lord Slug, which is super, super annoying that we've seen in the matches, then this is going to be uh, one of the texts that you're going to have to be putting in. I think that's, that's a big thing outside of Barrier Hope. Um, they can play in your four slot, which probably takes over Majin Buu, unfortunately. Uh, we also have East Kai's Keeping Watch, same thing as Koizakai, just punishing things that 
um, that come out on your turn that you don't want to, especially the mirror. But I, I don't think the mirror is going to come out or going to be a thing anytime soon. Blue Impulse and Pretty Black Hole that we did see, which is very, very cool. Uh, this is this card comes in and out of hypeness uh, every so often. It's really good when you have like these one cost, five cost bodies that you can re remove a bunch of one drops against Gogeta Xeno after you like block and then you get to um, save it or revive and then you can use a pretty black hole to remove the rest. You know, that type of thing. It's it's uh, pretty versatile. Here's David Liu. So pretty similar um, to other Gogeta Xeno decks. I think, I think I'm trying to see if there's any like major changes. There's a few changes to the one drops. Uh, I would say that's pretty much it. Uh, ratio is a little bit different. Uh, if we compare back to back to uh, David Liu's and Juan Soto's, uh, I think the unison uh, choices and as well as ratios are going to be the major changes. And of course, the rarity. So there's that. <laughs> um, but uh, three PyCon instead of the um, the Black Smoke Dragon, I think that's really just a player choice and just how you function the deck. Um, he also doesn't play the six drop Warper card Vegeta. Uh, so that's also something to consider. I don't really see it here unless I'm blind. Yeah, I don't see it here. Uh, so no targets for the beyond all limits. I think that's something to, to probably consider for the future. Um, and then we also have the one of, uh, thwarting. I think actually this against anything but blue and yellow, even against yellow there, they have to kind of keep the um the the crusher ball or the uh, giant ball or the um goku counterplay in hand for this not to be effective um bully unleash is interesting to see uh probably against the mirror obviously uh, deborah is really good uh and then i'm not sure what this does because it's 30k power but i i don't know maybe david Liu can give us some insight on that last but not least is ivan's deck uh which is another fire dragon but this time he is playing the uh, Saiyan Scions most likely to get out um, more of the higher dragons out um, a bit easier being an, a, a 10k attacker, um, just making, making it a little bit more consistent. The side deck is interesting with the Death Blaster. Um, I don't really see, see this. I mean, it's more of like a Cold Bloodless, so I, I think it's more of an unexpected rogue card as far as the, um, the sideboard. Uh, we also have some hand destruction hate, some Gogeta Xeno hate, um, blue hate if I had to take a guess, and then of course uh, this guy, which I think he played or sided one time, but he never um, he never played, I think. But choosing two of the opponent's energy and switching to rest mode and playing the card, you're paying three to get rid of two of their energy. I don't really see that happening um, anytime soon, but. I guess this is probably a last minute choice. All right, that is it. Uh, again, I plan to post a video every single day in January. It's going to be good because I have uh, a lot of stuff planned. But on January 1st, I'm going to go ahead and explain exactly what kind of videos are going to be out and as well as what I want to do and maybe something a little special at the end of that video. But please subscribe if you are new, like, dislike, comment below. Let me know how you've been doing and what I've been missing etc um did you enjoy worlds that i do a good job streaming that i do good i'm gonna have an existential crisis if i keep talking i'll see you in the next one